Hello, welcome to the GPP Chen Music Podcast. Of course, I'm Big Italy 42. He's Scott Maywood, got Sports 25 to life. And uh, like the title indicates, we're talking about GPP action tonight, FanDuel and DraftKings, and a ton of viable pitching options tonight. So especially on DraftKings where you have to play two pitchers, you're actually going to feel a little bit of confidence in these guys, unlike the last few days where you're having to roster a second pitcher that makes you want to throw up or you just feel awful about you just hope you're almost just hoping you get lucky with some of these garbage pitchers the last few days but tonight kind of the opposite a lot of good options and also a lot of really bad pitchers to target with uh offenses so one of the better slates we've seen this year and i think it's gonna be a fun night yeah definitely i mean the pitching options are outstanding tonight i mean we have three of my favorite guys to throw all throwing tonight couple middle tier options that I like quite a bit also. I mean, tons of good matchups. There's probably six, seven, eight guys that are better than any of the pitchers we've been throwing over the last couple of days, like you said. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just a lot of really good options, even some decent value guys today. It should be a really, really fun night. Um, as far as, like, my top option goes, I'm kind of debating between Scherzer and Grinky a little bit here. Uh, I don't mind Felix Hernandez either, but I just feel like, Grinky's such a big favorite. I mean, obviously not as big as Scherzer. I think I am I seeing this right that Scherzer's a minus two ninety favorite. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll make. He's not quite sure Clayton was... Kershaw, but he's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, because like Grinky at one ninety, I feel great about, but two ninety for Scherzer is just pretty crazy. Um, but I like both of those guys a ton. Those are my two favorite cash game plays. I'm probably going to be mixing them in. It's going to be hard to play both on DraftKings because that's. A, a huge chunk of your salary, almost half your salary overall um, at pitcher if you're going with both of them. But, I mean, outstanding cash game duo if you can figure out a batting lineup around it that uh, makes some sense. So um, I'm sure we'll get to some of the cheaper guys lately, but those are my top two options. I know you're really big on Scherzer tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to be, like you said, with that monstrous favorite. You see that total and you kind of rub your eyes and you see yeah. if he's really that big of a favorite. And then... Then you realize that you get Bryce Harper and company against Sean O'Sullivan on the other side, and it just makes even more sense. And that's obviously a target you want to be having as well. But yeah, I'm with you. Those are my options as well. You got You like Felix Hernandez here as well. He should get plenty of run support uh, with Marco Estrada. But I mean, in the Rogers Center, obviously not a great place to pitch. Pretty tough lineup there. They're obviously better against lefties, but uh, certainly some big bats that could punish any mistakes. So I'm with you there. I think Scherzer and Grinky being the monstrous favorites. Got to be your top two options. Looking at other options here, um, a guy I really like, and I'm sure many others do as well, is Garrett Cole. $9,200 on DraftKings, $9,400 on FanDuel. He's got great numbers on the season. 26.6% strikeout rate. Ground ball rate of almost 53%. Um, He's only given up two home runs. And really, if you look at what he's done, I mean, he really only had, um, had that bad start against Cincinnati. And outside of that, I mean, actually two bad starts against Cincinnati. Outside of that, he's just mowed everyone else down. He's done great. I mean, you, now he gets a Mets team. It's 28th in the league um, in Team Wolba. Second lowest team ISO against righties. Also one of the better pitchers parks in the league. A lot of things going for Garrett Cole tonight. I think I'm going to have a ton of him in some tournaments. Yeah, definitely. Him and uh, Felix are probably my two favorite high price tournament options today. I, I actually like the matchup for Felix. I just don't think he's nearly as safe a play as Scherzer and Grinky are. Um, most of Toronto's big bats are right-handed. Felix is obviously one of the best uh, righty versus righty pitchers in the majors. Yeah. Um, tons of strikeout potential with him, especially with those Toronto guys that do strike out a lot despite being really powerful hitters. Um, I think he's going to be way, way under-owned tonight. It's going to be kind of similar to that. I think it was Grinky that had a nice matchup. Maybe it was with San, San Diego that last time when Grinky was just like really heavily owned and um, Hernandez just went off and had a really monster game. Yeah, and he was uh, like 10% owned or something like that. Yeah, he was, he was way under owned. He had almost as good of a matchup and was a little bit cheaper. And I mean, it's just, it feels like one of those days again where people are going to overlook him a little bit because he doesn't have that really enticing San Diego or Philly matchup like these other guys do. And so I'm going Felix a ton of GPPs. I love Cole and GPPs. I don't mind Grinky or Scherzer just because I think the overall strength of this pitching slate is going to bring down those ownership percentages a little bit yeah, I um, in tournaments. So I, I think you can go really any of these guys, but if you're going for really low percentage owned guys, I think Felix and Cole are where it's at. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you there. Um, we'll throw out a couple more options for you here. Um, 
it, it's a tough matchup, and it's not a great ballpark, but John Lester is pitching really well right now. Yep. Um, he's $9,000 on DraftKings and $9,300 on FanDuel. I think he's going to be one of the lowest-owned aces. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of aces on the mound tonight, but I think as far as aces go, he'll be probably the lowest-owned of any of these guys in the top seven or eight price-wise. Right. Because uh, the Diamondbacks are top ten against lefties this year, um, but they don't hit for a lot of power outside of Paul Goldschmidt against lefties. 113 team ISO right there tells you, you know, John Lester's not a guy that gives up a ton of hits. You know, he's he's usually pretty efficient once he gets it going. Struggled early in the season. But, uh, you know, recently, I mean, he his last game he scattered not, nine hits over seven innings. But before that, five hits, seven hits, three hits, five hits. I mean, he's a guy that's efficient. He pitches deep into games. And he's really got his strikeouts working recently. He's up to 22% after a couple really bad starts at the beginning of the season. So um, I'm looking at him as... Probably my uh, my lowest owned guy that I think could end up getting you, you know, 18 points on FanDuel, 30 points on DraftKings, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there's just so many guys in this high price range that you can like today. We haven't even mentioned Pineda yet, who's been pitching outside of that last start as well as anyone in the majors. Yep. Um, struggle against Kansas City. Kansas City's been one of the better hitting teams on the season. He only struck out one guy and had 10 hits against him in that one. But the game before that, he whipped Baltimore 16 times yeah. um, and went seven innings. Went eight innings the game before that. He's, I mean, he's looked fantastic. And Texas has been pretty up and down this year. Um, we've seen them break out of their funk a little bit. But, I mean, they're still a high strikeout team that can struggle against righties. Outside of Prince Fielder, there's not a lot that really scares me in that lineup in a righty-righty matchup with, like, Beltre and a couple of those other guys. So I think Pineda's an interesting GPP play here, too. Um, I mean, we can move down the list and talk about some cheaper options. Um, one guy I like quite a bit is Ubaldo Jimenez. Uh, only 7000 on DraftKings today, I think, is one of the better mid-range GPP plays. Um, he's looked really strong in three of his last four games. Um, 15 strikeouts over the last two gone seven innings in three of the last four. He's looked a lot better than I've expected him to over the last few games. And for 7,000 against a Miami team that really struggles against the righties, I know they have Yelich back, which is a huge thing for them, having a decent lefty bat in the lineup. But he's still really the only lefty bat that worries you at all in that lineup. Yeah, and I mean, we were mentioning earlier how the Mets have the second lowest team ISO against righties. The Marlins are the only team with the lower one, yeah. just 102. I mean, they just do not hit righties at all. And like you said, Yelich helps, but it certainly doesn't scare you away from taking a pitcher against him. And at that price, I mean, he's only 7,200 on FanDuel also. And like you mentioned, I mean, he's having a really good year. Almost a 24% strikeout rate, 55% ground ball rate. Lefties and righties under a 260 Woba against him. So I think as far as the cheap options go, I mean, at least for me, I think he's uh, the best you're going to do as far as upside in GPPs. Yeah, right. I mean, if I'm talking cash games, maybe Rick Porcello is a little bit better against that weak Angels lineup, but he just doesn't have the upside that Ubaldo has. No. And so that's why I'm leaning him in GPPs. Other guys in that price range, um, not a ton else I like. I, I don't mind Cindergaard a little bit as a GPP play. Not a favorite today, but looked much better in his last start than he did in the first one. Um, I think he's a decent upside play there in a Pittsburgh ballpark that favors hitters or pitchers really well. Um, nothing too special there. He's probably my third option in that price range. If you want to go down really far, um, there's not a ton super value wise. I, I looked at Alfredo Simon a little bit. He's only 5,500 on DraftKings today. He's in the mid sixes on FanDuel, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, he's uh, I believe he's 68. Yep, looks like he is. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Fandle, he's, Simon is 77. Oh, okay, so he's a lot higher than I thought. So he's a, he's a DraftKings-only GPP play for me. Houston strikes out a decent amount. They're really up and down. Um, 5,500, I feel pretty good about. 7,700, not worth it for me. I'd rather pay up if I'm doing that on, on FanDuel with just one pitcher. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there, there's a guy who looks like he's been pitching well, but is a guy that I just cannot stand. He sets the record for fly ball... Uh, rate every year seemingly Chris Young facing off against St. Louis people may look at his game logs and play him this guy's a, not a good pitcher there's a reason why he's so cheap I think St. Louis gets to him tonight I mean, they, finally I mean he's had a couple good starts I guess but I have zero faith in this guy I do think the St. Louis bats get to him tonight yeah definitely I think so too I mean there's not a lot to love down here no. as far as really cheap guys 
I mean, you can look around at some of these guys and feel okay about it, I guess, but no one that's really strongly favored. I mean, probably the best favorite out of all of them is Mogul Song for San Francisco because Colorado's bats have been really struggling, but I don't really want to play him in cores. But at 5,300 against a team that's been struggling as bad as Colorado has been lately, especially against righties, I, I don't really hate it. It's not going to be an option that I'm like looking to go at, out and play him in 50% of my lineups or anything, but I'll throw him in a couple if I'm trying to get some of the bigger hitters that I'm not going to be able to get with these aces. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, Vogelsong, I mean, his issue is obviously home runs. giving up nine this yep. year. So keeping the ball in the park isn't that big of a deal in most places, especially in San Francisco. But you move it over shift to course. Um, I mean, we see guys like Michael McHenry take one deep yesterday and almost took a second one. So yep. certainly going to be some, uh, some fireworks between him and uh, Kyle Kendrick tonight. But, yeah, like I said, I mean, there's not going to be many more low-owned pitchers than uh, Vogelsong. So if he has himself a decent game, you're looking at, like, 2% owned with him tonight at best. Yep. All right, let's move on here to catcher. Um, obviously, Buster Posey, if you can afford him, he gets Kyle Kendrick and Coors Field. Kind of a no-brainer. I mean, if you have followed baseball for more than about five seconds, you know Buster Posey, great hitter. You know he crushes lefties, but he's obviously great against righties, too. Kyle Kendrick already allowed 10 home runs on the season, seven to right-handed batters. I mean, that's an easy top play for you if you can afford him. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's really hard to go anywhere else in GPPs, even though his ownership is going to be really high. I mean, you can look at Will and Rosario if he's in the lineup today. Um, he didn't start yesterday, which I think bodes well for him being in the lineup today, although he did pinch it in like the fifth inning and play the rest of the game after that. So um, that'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't mind Evan Gaddis at 4,000 on DraftKings against Simon. Um, when blowing out pretty heavily to center right now in that game at Detroit. It's a pitcher's park, but when the wind's blowing out that that strongly, it kind of evens it out a little bit. Yeah. Um, one guy we talked a little bit about yesterday that I liked is Miguel Montero facing another fairly weak righty in Cole Mentor. Only 3200 is a really strong GPP play for me. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a great price there, and a nice price on FanDuel as well, just 2900 Yeah. So uh, I think he's a great way to go. Get yourself some cheap exposure in a good ballpark, good, good matchup. Um, another guy with some upside, obviously, short porch in Yankee Field, Brian McCann. Um, $3,700 on DraftKings and three, I'm sorry, $2,800 on FanDuel. He gets Colby Lewis, who, once again, I'm still not a believer. You can believe in him all you want. He's still <laughs> terrible against lefties. And Brian McCann, not a great lefty, but he does have some power as far as catchers go. And yeah, he's got, I like that. Yeah, he's got great upside tonight. Probably, probably some, one of the better upsides for someone tonight not named Buster Posey, if you ask me. Yeah, I don't mind Vogt as usual. He's more of a cash game play for me, though, against Archer. I respect Archer a little bit more than I do Lewis, Cole Mentor, guys like that. Yeah. Um, but Vogt's been really hot. Obviously, always a good play against righties. Only 3,400 on DraftKings. I want to say he's 29 or 31 on FanDuel also. Is that right? Let me look that up so real he quick. Is, uh... 35. So he's a little bit more pricey there. I'd probably prefer him on DraftKings, but... Um, He's more of a cash game play anyway for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if you're looking for cheap exposure to Coors Field, look and see which catcher's in the lineup. Obviously, if you're on FanDuel, Will and Rosario no longer with catcher eligibility. He's at first base, which takes him out of play completely for me tonight on yep. FanDuel. But Nick Hundley or Michael McHenry, both guys pretty cheap. Whichever one is in the lineup, I think he makes for a fine cheap play tonight as well. All right, let's move on here to to first base where we could probably talk all day long about all these first base <laughs> options, but we'll spare you and just talk about our favorites. Um, I'll go first and throw out, of course, Brandon Belt. Not a surprise there. Lefty against Kyle Kendrick in Coors Field tonight. Uh, 4,900 on DraftKings, 39 on FanDuel. Makes for a great play. If you're looking for tournament options, which you obviously are if you're watching this podcast, Paul Goldschmidt crushes lefties. He's at home tonight. He's expensive. He is facing a tough pitcher, John Lester, but... No one's going to have him. He's 4,800 on DraftKings, and he is 49 on FanDuel. So if you're yep. if you're not a Lester believer, Goldschmidt against any lefty is a great tournament play. Yeah, definitely. Really hard to argue with there. Um, I mean, I feel great about him as a tournament play, especially at that price. I mean, he's going to be under-owned just because of the sheer amount of options today, and I feel really good about him. People avoid him against Lester, too. Probably a guy that's going to be less than 5%, I would think, despite his massive upside. Yep. Um, plenty of first baseman I like, though, like you mentioned. I mean, Vado's facing a righty in Carrasco, who I, I'm not scared of. Um, 
Freddie Freeman facing Righty and Peralta, who I feel pretty good about too. He's at four. Both those guys are at four thousand on DraftKings. Um, I believe they're both below four thousand on FanDuel. Yeah, Votto at thirty four hundred. Um, Freeman at thirty three. Um, yeah, and Willie Peralta, or why, Willie Peralta, one of the worst in the league against lefties too. So yeah, I mean that's a great spot for Freeman tonight. Yeah, definitely. Got to feel really good about that. Um, I mean, there's just so many. Adrian Gonzalez against Kashner. I don't mind that, especially at his reduced price right now. Yeah. Um, and there's then plenty of other guys, too. Yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> we could uh, talk first base all day, like you said. I mean, I'm going down the list, and I'm like, well, we should probably mention that guy. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, any of these big hitters, most of them in good spots. Surprisingly, you know, there's a lot of good pitchers on the mound, but a lot of the good first basemen don't have tough matchups, actually. So, um, Jose Abreu, I'll throw out there also, gets fly ball pitcher Phil Hughes. $4,600 on DraftKings. Nice and cheap, as he has been on FanDuel, just 35 I mean, yep. only one home run in May, but if there's a time you're going to take one deep, it's at home against a fly ball pitcher like Phil Hughes, who's really been struggling. Yeah, that's a really good call. Um, as far as cheap first baseman go, this is kind of where we're going to say this again. I don't like playing cheap first baseman, especially on a big slate. So you can go that route if you'd like. Not something I'll be doing tonight. No, I don't think I will be either. I mean, there's no one, like, you're just giving up so much, like, potential, like, yep. if you take a cheap first baseman. If there was someone that had really, like, high upside that was priced really cheaply, like, in the low 2000s or something, you could do it. But, I mean, there's no one like that today, and so I just I can't do it. The one guy that I would, like, even consider would be, like, Michael Kadir, but I'm just going to play him in the outfield. Yep. Yeah, save, save your first base for some of these big bats. And, like we mentioned, if there's 10 good big bats at first base and you cheap out, and you got eight other guys that score in double digits on DraftKings or whatever it may be on FanDuel. You're setting yourself behind pretty quickly, and that's not not a strategy that I like to implore on big uh, big slates. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's move on to second base, where for a big slate, there's not a ton of guys you like. I mean, obviously, there's certainly some options. Mike Leak is bad against left-handed pitcher or left-handed batters, as we know. Um, so Jason Kipnis, while very expensive, I think is a great tournament option. 4,900 DraftKings, 46 on FanDuel. He's a guy that I'll be looking at as well. Um, Joe Panic, 32 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DraftKings. He'll, he'll be batting second tonight against Wrighty and Kyle Kendrick. Of course, that's more Coors exposure for you. And then another guy who batted second yesterday, DJ, DJ LeMayhew. He's $3,800 on DraftKings and uh, $3,100 on FanDuel. Not a guy with a ton of upside, but in that big park, he's, he is batting over 300, sitting right now at 320. So he's a guy that puts the ball in play. And, you know, if he hits a gapper, he could certainly be involved in that offense, especially if he's batting second again tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, a GPP play that I hate that I like tonight is Robinson Cano um, facing Estrada for Toronto. Just keeps coming um, back to it. I know. I think his price is up today, too, which is annoying because he's in core or not in cores, uh, in Toronto. Yep. He's and, down on FanDuel, though. Yeah, he's still really cheap on FanDuel, so that's nice. Um, 2900 on FanDuel is pretty strong. It's really hard to pass up Panic at 3200 on FanDuel for him, though, which is the tough part there because Panic's not priced up. But, I don't know, Cano's interesting to me. I mean, I feel like he's probably due for a home run since he hasn't hit one in, like, 300 years. Ever, um, it seems. <laughs> I think it was, like, April, like, 12th or something was the last time he hit a home run. But he's actually been hitting a little better lately. I think he's got a hit in, like, 10 of his last 12 games or something like that, which is um, a lot better than he's been, so... Yeah. But I mean, maybe he's coming around a little bit. A single, you know? That's yeah, problem. right. But hopefully, I mean, he's due. He'll get a home run eventually, right? Toronto's just as good a place as any to do it. But, I mean, not a guy I love. Kipnis, another lefty, righty matchup. But he's up at 4,900 on DraftKings. I like him a little bit more on FanDuel also. Um, he's not overly cheap there either, though. So, um, it really depends on where you want to go there. He's 4,600 in that matchup. So, I mean, he's, a, he's probably... A, a good GPP play just because people aren't going to want to pay up at second base or in when panic's pretty low yep. um, on both sites at cores. So that'll be a, a decent swerve play there. D Gordon's look terrible. I don't think I can play him right now. He looks uh, like the old D Gordon. They can't hit the baseball and get yeah, on. Yeah. He's striking out all the time and not putting the ball in play when his batting average on balls in play is like 500. Yep. He's so, going to start bunting every time. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it might work. Good luck throwing him out on that. Yeah. Right. Um, Especially other, with you, Baldo yeah. playing pitching today he could probably get four bunt singles today oh yeah you know he, he's not even gonna care he's gonna be like the catcher that's you go ahead go you go ahead and get that one Caleb Joseph but uh another option um 
First of all, he has a tremendous picture on DraftKings. I mean, it just looks great. He looks like he's about to throw up. Jose Ramirez, $3,400. Um, he, he could be batting second. He could be batting seventh. He could be batting ninth. He's been all over the place. But if he's got a nice lineup spot, I like his uh, his ability as a switch hitter to get to yep. Mike Leak tonight in that spacious ballpark. He's got it steals bases. Got a little bit of power. Not much, though. But I think he's an interesting option there as well. I'd probably prefer to play him at shortstop, though, where he has that eligibility on DraftKings. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's look over here to third base where, as usual, there's some big bats there. Um, there's two options I'm really looking to pay up for today. And coincidentally, one of them's really not even that expensive. I had to scroll down to find him or this morning, actually. Uh, first one being Chris Bryant against Josh Colmenter. Obviously, we should, he showed his power once again last night um, at San Diego. Hit a home run there. I believe it was in his first at-bat. He's 5K, which is expensive. And then if you want your cores exposure, you got Nolan Arenado against Ryan Vogelsong. He did uh, come off the bench last night, have an RBI single, and uh, you got to think he's going to be back in the lineup tonight. 4,300 against fly ball pitcher and cores yep. makes, uh, makes him a great play tonight. Yeah, I like him quite a bit also. Um, elsewhere, Kyle Seeger. We already mentioned Marco Estrada. Terrible at keeping the ball in the, in, uh, in the ballpark. Certainly got some upside. Hasn't shown a ton of it recently. It's a ton of power, I should say, but he's hitting the ball really well. I mean, got hits in nine of his last ten games, a couple multi-hit games in there too. So he's an interesting play. He's nice and cheap at 3000 on FanDuel, 44 on DraftKings. And then when you're looking for some upside guys, you're looking at guys like Crush Davis. We know he's got power. Um, Henderson Alvarez didn't look good in his first start back from the DL. Um, we know he makes a mistake. Chris Davis doesn't swing the ball or doesn't swing the bat gently. So when he makes contact with the ball, it goes a long way. But the problem is he doesn't make a lot of contact. So I think he's a nice tournament option for that reason alone. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like him. Uh, Chisholm Hall against Leak is probably a play I'm going to look at quite a bit. And um, <coughs> Ramos Ramirez is probably the other guy I'm going to play a ton of GPPs today. Um, I like his matchup with a lefty in Wood. Only 3400 on DraftKings is a steal of a price. I believe he's 2900 on FanDuel. Is that right? Um, I believe so. Nope, 31 today. Yeah, I think he went up. Yeah, so, I mean, both of those prices are really, really strong, though, as a GPP play for a guy that hasn't been great, so he's not going to be heavily owned. I like him quite a bit as a GPP play today. Um, if you're looking for value at third base, there's not a, a ton to love. Um, I mean, the same guys we've been mentioning all week, basically, Pedro uh, Siriaco, 2,000 on DraftKings, minimum on FanDuel also. Guy that's been jumping around in the order quite a bit. Another one of those guys that's been two, seven, nine, eight, two. So um, you want to look and see where he's at in the order. If he's hitting second, obviously that's a steal of a value. Um, Corey Spangenberg is a guy you mentioned quite a bit. He's facing Grinky today. Probably going to avoid him. He hasn't been very good since he had that two home run game. Yeah. Um, other guy I look at a little bit at third base is a value guy is Eric Campbell for uh, the Mets. I believe he hit second yesterday, or maybe it was Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday, but yeah, he was he was right up oh, there. Oh, he hit second Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then hit seventh yesterday. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, if he's up there again, and even fifth, though, you get your RBI opportunities. He's really cheap, too. Yeah, right. At 2600 on DraftKings, it looks like he's 2200 on FanDuel. I mean, that's a really good value play if he's hitting second again. Yeah. Um, he's looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, Cole's obviously not a guy that you love throwing out there, throwing out a third baseman, like kind of not elite hitter against. But for that price, I mean, it's it's a really good price. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that's going to wrap things up for third base. Uh, moving over to shortstop, looks like DraftKings nailed it where Troy Tulowitzki is not hitting the ball and Brandon Crawford is hitting the ball. And Brandon Crawford's your most expensive shortstop. And, I mean, I'd say for good reason right now. I mean, Tulo. Even when he's making contact, it's not hard contact. I mean, the best ball he hit the other day was a foul ball down the line. So, I mean, I'm not saying not to play Troy Tulowitzki. I'll certainly have some exposure, especially against fly ball pitcher and Vogelsong. But like I said, he hasn't looked that good. I'll have more Crawford than Tulowitzki tonight. How about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to, too. I really want Tulowitzki to break out of this, though, because it's so frustrating having the guy that should be the top option not producing right now at all i mean it are we we i feel like we talk about it on every podcast it's like oh well he's gonna get it going he's gonna get it going but i mean he's just if he's not hitting for power he's never ever worth his price tag yeah he's finally playing a decent amount of games in colorado this week too and he, he i mean he's looked a little better he's 
his batting average has been much better over the last five or six games. But, I mean, the power hasn't really been there. I think he had that one double two games ago. Yeah. And even that was a bloop. Yeah, right. But Um, You mentioned Crawford. Love him against the righty today, especially in Kendrick. Really hard to argue with that as a GPP play. His price should hopefully drive his uh, ownership down a little bit. Um, not too much else I love at shortstop today. Brad Miller against Estrada is a guy I'll look at quite a bit, um, especially if he's hitting second in the order, which he usually does against righties. So I feel pretty good about that one. Outside of that, um, not too much. I'll probably look at some cheaper guys, like uh, if Elian Herrera is in the lineup again for Milwaukee in the at the top. I mean, 2300 on DraftKings is a steal for him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you're looking for a big upside guy, Ian Desmond's been moved up to second in the order. Uh, 4,400 on DraftKings, 31 on FanDuel. I- I'm sure we all expect the Nationals to get to Sean O'Sullivan today. Batting a couple spots ahead of Bryce Harper certainly doesn't hurt either. Right. Um, if Herrera's not in the lineup, I think Hector Gomez has been the guy that's been replacing him. He's, for some reason, more expensive than Herrera, but he's been pretty good against lefties. Um, those guys have been kind of hitting, like, five, six, seven type area. Uh, Herrera's hit second a few times. I'd prefer Herrera to be in the lineup, but either one of those guys is going to be a pretty good value play today if they're in the lineup. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one more cheap guy out there is Danny Espinosa at 3,300. Yep. We're we'll seeing uh, his uh, his contact rate is up uh, among the highest uh, in the league in, as far as improvement from last season. So he's uh, he's guy has been hitting for a little bit of power, too. He's got five home runs. Uh, in case, just going back to Troy Tulowitzki, he has two. And Espinosa doesn't even play every day. So get it together, Troy, because you're embarrassing yourself out here. you gotta get, you got to at least beat Danny Espinosa on home runs this year. Right. All right, let's move on here to the outfield where Bryce Harper, for the first time in, I don't know, probably a week or so, not the most expensive outfielder. I mean, he's only $100 less, but 5500 for him against Sean O'Sullivan. Certainly want some exposure if you're playing multiple tournament lineups. You obviously don't love the park, but, I mean, he's still Bryce Harper. Probably going to be pretty angry like he was when he got thrown out in the last game. So, uh, angry Bryce Harper is the kind of Bryce Harper you want on your team. And yeah, I still have him as the top outfield play today. So, oh, he, I mean, he has to be until he cools off. I mean, the only reason he didn't get your points last time is just because he got tossed. And I, I, I feel like he would have easily gotten to that. And uh, yeah, it's 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 impossible to fade Bryce Harper in tournaments at this point. I mean, you're just you're beating yourself if you're doing that right now. Yep, exactly. Um, Hunter Pence is a good option. I like him a lot more on FanDuel where he's just $3,300. He's 5500 Same price as Bryce Harper on DraftKings. A little too pricey for me there, but he's been hitting well since he came back up. We know he's the hustle-type guy. Big ballpark, of course, in Coors Field. Hits one in the gap. You know that Pence is never going to slow down. Turn doubles into triples, singles into doubles kind of thing. So I think he's uh, one of my favorite options, but like I said, way more on FanDuel. You're obviously looking at Nelson Cruz against Marco Estrada, but we probably don't need to tell you that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, he's a great play. I mean, there's a ton of great plays on this slate. Charlie Blackman against Vogel Song, I love. Um, Carlos Gonzalez against Vogel Song, I love. Obviously, everybody in both of these outfields is a pretty good play. Um, outside of that, I like Michael Brantley quite a bit, but he's a little pricey on both sites right now. But him against Leak is a, a pretty strong play. Um, Ryan Braun, I think, is a great GPP play against a lefty today. That's probably going to be one of my higher-owned guys that I think is going to be way under-owned just because he's just that small amount below all these like popular guys, and he's priced right around Blackman and uh, uh, Gonzalez, which I think is going to make him really low-owned today. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. Uh, he In a great spot, and I mean, he's starting to really crush the ball, too. I think he's got four home runs in his last eight or nine games. Yeah. So really getting it going. Yeah. Um, Elsewhere, I mean, if you want some more tournament plays, Hanley Ramirez is the guy who's just really been struggling the last couple of days, but we know he's got big upside. You can play him on stop if you want. Yeah, he just feels too – he feels injured Yep, is what it is. I mean, he looked great early in the season when he was healthy. I mean, he was crushing the ball. And now he just looks like he's banged up. It looks like he picked up another injury recently. Um, like you said, at, as a shortstop play on DraftKings, you can feel pretty good about him as a GPP play, I think, just because of the relative lack of upside and the ridiculous price on Crawford today. But I don't think I can play him as an outfielder today right now. No, and especially because, I mean, over the last two games, Big Poppy's gotten walked intentionally three times because no one's afraid of handling Ramirez. Right? Yeah, he, he looks hurt it. is what it is. And I mean, it's if I'm Boston, work. you rest the guy. I mean, yeah. What do you got to lose? I mean, you're you're hurting yourself right now. But either way, that's a different argument for a different time. <laughs> so he's uh, 
just just leave it leave him out of your outfield. Like I said, we should have mentioned him at shortstop, but I think that's the only place you can really realistically play him. Yeah, good um, call. Um, other GPP options I like Brandon Moss against a righty and leak. It's a guy I'm going to look at pretty heavily today. Forty one hundred on DraftKings. Um, that's a that's a steal of a price for him against a fairly weak righty. Yeah. Um, Chris Davis in a decent uh, righty lefty matchup. Thirty five hundred against Wood is a guy I'll look at. Um, Josh Reddick kind of let everyone down yesterday. Probably can go back to that well if you want to against Archer. Um, he'll be really, really low on coupled with the fact that he's facing Archer, who's a pretty good uh, strikeout pitcher, and the fact that he was heavily owned yesterday and didn't do anything. So Yeah, that's true. Um, I'll, I'll throw Mark Trumbo into the mix, too, also, as he yep. destroys lefties. Obviously, John Lester, once again, still tough matchup, but 3,800 on both sites. For a guy who's got double dong upside in Arizona, I don't mind him at all in that price. And yeah, uh, I don't either. Preston Tucker, I'll throw out there too. Had a pinch hit home run last game. The guy's been hitting the ball pretty well. Gets Alfredo Simon today, so um, Alfredo Simon's been okay. But Preston Tucker's a guy that's been hitting the ball, really going under the radar. And uh, as we know, Simon much tougher on righties than lefties. So if Tucker's in the lineup, hitting around fifth or sixth, I think he's a really interesting tournament play that. Doesn't have any sort of name recognition, so no one will be on the guy. Yep, good call. And, uh, of course, Jock Peterson, still cheap. Uh, yep. he's, he turned uh, his uh, his one outcome of home run or strike, or his double outcome, home run or strikeout, into looks like strikeout or double at this point. So uh, maybe he could turn it back around, but, I mean, he's really cheap everywhere. And Cash, yep. we know, um, a good pitcher, but has his, his struggles with left-handed bats. All right, um, with that, that's going to wrap things up for us. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. And, of course, great content to help you win on tonight's slate at DailyFantasyCafe.com. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.